King Edgy here, bringing you my first Gen 9 video. And if you don't know, I, I'd taken a, a pretty long break from Gen 1 at the start of this year and, and did a lot of Gen 9 just for fun. Uh, I got pretty decent at it. I was never like as good as I am at Gen 1 for sure, but I'm, I'm on the ladder, you know. There I am, almost at the top half of the ladder. It's pretty exciting. Um, but really getting the feel for Gen 9 after after some time away So uh, from Gen 1. And it's just fun to mix things up every now and then. So I hope this video is enjoyable to you, even if you uh, don't know Gen 9 at all. But here are the things to keep in mind, the differences between Gen 1 and Gen 9. Most things are the same, except there's three new types. Dark Steel and Fairy. Hopefully you know that those exist, but if not, basically Dark and Steel showed up to, to mitigate the power of Psychic types. They showed up in Gen 2, they've been around for a while. And then Fairy showed up to mitigate the Dragon dominance. Um, I think that happened maybe in Gen 6. So that's kind of the new types. And then the gimmick of Gen 9, the big gimmick, uh, is that you can change one Pokemon's type one time during a battle. So in this video you will see a Pokemon changing type um, and you basically the way it works is that you can see in the controls a different type and you can click the button kind of like you could choose to Dynamax someone wants a battle or Mega Evolve someone wants a battle. Uh, this is the Gen 9 version of it. So you'll see that mechanic come out in short, um, in short order here. But this video is going to be different uh, for another reason too, which is that uh, early game we're going to get the lead uh, and be in a pretty comfortable position, and then mid game we're really going to struggle uh, before the turning point shows up and we close it out in the finish here. Uh, but let's just take a look at how this game goes. We're going up against Cranky Crocodile here, uh, and we've got Gyarados against Glalie. And Glalie is an ice type from Gen 3, um, and it knows a move that is four times effective against Gyarados, so we don't like this matchup at all. For those of you who are familiar too, this uh, video is before they stopped uh, Pokemon from knowing the ability Moody. So you'll see here that uh, Glalie could know Moody, and in fact, this Glalie does, which at every turn will raise one stat two stages and lower another one by one stage. It's a crazy overpowered ability, especially with Protect or Substitute or other things to just get those boosts off. We're going to play a little switching game here, switching around a bit, and just kind of trying to take it as it comes. Because this Glalie has its attack and special attack lowered, we feel maybe okay about going to someone that might be weak against it and we get hit with an ice move, but no big deal. We're going to break through this substitute. And we're kind of thinking about, okay, well, Glalie could be substitute, earthquake, freeze dry, protect. It could be disable. We're not really sure. So we're just going to try a few things and see what sticks here. We're going to just go for it and use our collision course again, which is a fighting type move here to break through this substitute. And since he subs twice, we think maybe he's not protect, maybe he's disable. So we're going to switch our move selection here, thinking that he might go for a disable. And in fact, he does go for disable, and we flare blitz KO him, which is awesome. That was a really good call by us, very happy with that decision there. And then uh, Dedende comes out. Dedene, excuse me. Um, it's not a great matchup for us, so we go to Slay King. And then here again, you know, Slay King is great. It's Choice Banded. Um, Earthquake will one-shot this Dedene, but uh, we're going to use Giga Impact. Giga Impact takes a turn to recharge, but um, it's our strongest move, 150 power plus stab, and it'll hit a Flying type just in case. So let's see. The perfect prediction, once again, it goes to a flying type and we get the KO. Beautiful, beautiful shot. And now what's kind of cool about Giga Impact is that it requires a recharge turn. 
but that counted as uh, Slay King's um, truant turn, where it wouldn't agree. So you get another attack, but Cranky knew that, went out into a ghost type, really smart move here. Uh, we boldly went out into Umbreon here. Um, could have been Moonblasted easily, but we thought he might suspect the Iron Moth and go for a Shadow Ball. So we have Umbreon here. Don't get the Paralysis off, which is too bad. Would have really liked to get that off. But we really are worried about this Electric Mouse because he does a number to Gyarados. He's a Fairy type, so he does a number to Coridon. He's fast, 228. Like that's that's some good speed. So we got to try to play around it as best we can. Unfortunately, he also has Gastrodon, and our Iron Moth is choice spec, so we can't switch moves. Uh, to use our grass type attack, so we just gotta try to play around it. Hope he goes surf. Maybe we can survive earthquake, but he gets a crit earthquake, so we go down. Unfortunate, but we've got this tanky Umbreon here, who is pretty good. We've got Iron Moth that knows a grass type move, which is also pretty good. So, uh, but we f we fake him out here with a little U-turn, which is good. Go into Umbreon. Raichu's got a decent attack stat, so Foul Play, which uses your opponent's attack stat against them. Um, going to do some massive damage here, which is awesome. Raichu doesn't do much to us, so we feel good about this. If Dedenne comes out, though, we're still worried, because only really Iron Moth can do much to Dedenne, and uh, we can't really take too many hits with that fragile Moth, so we got to think about this carefully. So we just kind of play the stall game a little bit with Umbreon. Try to heal up, try to get as much leftovers recovery as we can, and then see if we can take a hit or two. See if we can stall out this, this little fairy mouse here. But the wish pass into Iron Moth we liked. We thought, well, Iron Moth will heal up, even if it gets Thunderbolted or Super Fanged. And now do we go Energy Ball? We don't. We still choose Sludge Wave. Like, come on, man. Um, but that's okay. So we have to switch out one more time. We've got a Flying type who can avoid Earthquake, but he double switches on us, which is pretty good. Went for Calm Mind. Okay, but, you know, we're Articuno. We can still do some good damage through that. We know he's Life Orb, so we're kind of hoping in this mid-game here that we can just get him to chip away at himself with these plays. So we're going to just take that Shadow Ball and then protect to get the re recovery from leftovers. And then we're going to see what happens. But we've got to make some plays because this Flutter Man can absolutely knock out the rest of our team. We eat this Moon Blast up real good, which is awesome. And then we safely go right back out to Umbreon. Unfortunately, he knows Psy Shock, so it doesn't take any Life Orb damage from that, which is too bad. But we're just trying to heal up a bit with Umbreon at this point. And kind of dance around Umbreon, Iron Moth, Umbreon, Iron Moth. Um, but here's, here's our play. <clears throat> we stay in. We stay in and eat the Psy Shock. A great call there on not switching out. That decision to not switch out really, really turns the tide here because uh, Fluttermane's in a spot where it one-shots everything on our team. Maybe not Gyarados, but maybe. And so we really needed to do just a bit more damage to it so that Life Orb would take it out. And we get off that huge foul play. What a, what a prediction to stay in there. Um, and on, on the other hand, right... Our plan was kind of, okay, well, if Umbreon goes down there, we can go to Gyarados and Dragon Dance to get off a little bit of uh, momentum here, hope that Gyarados survives a Moonblast. Um, but we do switch out to Gyarados. He switches things up and goes Psy Shock, thinking that we might go back to Iron Moth, but we don't. Um, Gyarados is here. It didn't get its Dragon Dance off, so it's going to be slower than any of these electric types, and we just have to let it go at that point. Um, so out comes Iron Moth, and now we're like, okay, every single time we've gone Sludge Wave, he might think we don't have our Grass-type attack. So I thought he'd switch out here. He stays in, 
and he turns Dedene into an electric type. And Dedene is normally electric fairy. By making it electric here, it just kind of increases the stab uh, a little bit more for electric type moves and gets rid of the fairy typing. So our sludge wave might not knock it out from this range. Uh, it does massive damage with Thunderbolt. We come back at it with Energy Ball, which gets a crit, doesn't quite get the KO, and Dedene heals up. And now we're a little worried. I mean, Umbreon's low on health. Articuno can't handle the Raichu and Dedene combo, but we can't really switch out. So we try our best. We go Umbreon. Okay, it doesn't do half, so we can survive another Thunderbolt, but not a Dazzling Gleam. We'll go for the Protect here as he goes into Dazzling Gleam, which makes a lot of sense. And now is where things uh, change. We recognize that if he uses Dazzling Gleam, it'll knock us out. If he uses Thunderbolt, it'll come close to knocking us out, but won't quite knock us out. Um, so we feel like if we change our type so that we're no longer a dark type, we might be able to survive, protect, wish kind of combo to get back to enough health. And if we do that, Umbreon's not going to get taken down. It's going to be too strong for basically everything. Uh, too much of a tank. So the big hope is he doesn't go Thunderbolt. Uh, even if he does go Thunderbolt, I think it's okay, as long as it's not a crit. It's only doing 27%. We've got enough. So change type and wish, and then see what happens. So we change type. He goes Dazzling Gleam. No problem now for a poison type. And we wish, we wish our way up. Um, and then on our next turn here, we again have a little bit of a decision to make. We could go Foul Play, which would do a chunk to Dedene. Um, but we could also protect and just heal up, right? Which prevents us from losing to a crit. So we do choose the protect. Um, and whew, we get lucky there that he goes U-turn, right? Because if he went straight to Gastrodon, we might have been in a little bit of trouble. But that's okay. We can go foul play pretty comfortably. We can wish up again and just recover. Again, as long as he doesn't go to Gastrodon, which he doesn't do, which is great. So we're going to wish up. Will he stay in or go to Gastrodon? He goes to Raichu, which surprises me. Now I don't need to use the Protect, and I get to heal up. And we get to Protect one more time to just heal up even a little bit more. And now another interesting play here. Raichu used Encore, right? So that's going to force me into just using Protect over and over again if he goes for Encore again. So I could switch out, right? I could switch out and everything would be fine. Or he can uh, switch out or attack us, right? And so the thinking is, oh, King Edgy is going to expect the Encore again. Maybe I'll attack. He'll switch out, I'll attack, I'll get a KO, right? Something like that. Or, Candy's just going to stay in, I might as well play it safe and go Encore. So those are kind of the options here. Let's see what King Edgy decides to do. That'd be me. I stay in. I tank the Volt Switch. Now he goes Gastrodon. And we do a decent chunk there with Foul Play, which is great. Doesn't seem like it's quite enough to take him down, but Umbreon's so defensive that we feel like we can take an Earthquake. Uh, so we just stick with it and foul play again, and we get the damage roll this time, which gets the KO. So pretty awesome. And uh, from there, Kruk knows he's got nothing. A foul play knocks out each of his last two, so it's not even worth continuing. Um, Especially in Gen 9 when they clear up those 100% accurate moves to make sure they are 100% accurate. 
So when we think about the turning point of this match, I think there are two candidates that are pretty good. But in video one of this series, I emphasized a good switch on our part. In video two, I emphasized a good move selection. In video three, I emphasized staying in when you know you can take a hit. Uh, and so in this particular video, I want to emphasize, uh, I don't want to emphasize the changing type. So like if I were to pick the changing of the type here, um, a few turns ago, we changed type. And so I could select the turn where we change type. I could also select this turn here where we choose to stay in, right? So again, this would be similar to video two here where we're like, mm, I think Kruk is going to overthink this here. I think he's going to go for something a little, a little cheeky and have a backup plan, right? In case it didn't work with Gyarados in the back. So I could have picked that as our turning point as well, but because I had the backup plan of Gyarados Dragon dancing up, I didn't really think that was the turning point, right? Um, I didn't really want to pick a turn where I change uh, type to be a turning point either, because if I did, then it wouldn't really carry over super well to Generation 1. So instead, I want to pick the turn... Uh, not turn 36, I guess, where I do change type. There it is. Another pivotal moment in the battle. Um, but instead, I actually want to choose the volt switch turn. A turn where instead of going encore for a second time, he goes volt switch. So turn 42. Um, and the, the thing that I want to emphasize about this is that we learned from earlier. We learned from the prediction game that Cranky used with that uh, Miss Magius here. Sorry, with the um, Flutter main. Uh, that he likes to predict, right? He likes to make predictions. And so we kind of use that against him. He overthinks, he, he makes over predictions almost rather than playing it safe, right? And so we, we caught him in another situation where he's making this prediction that we're going to go out into one of our other two, and he's going to safely go into Dene. Now, we also got lucky that he chose to go into Gastrodon, and we got the roll to two-shot him with foul play. But turn 42, definitely the turn in my mind where things changed, right? And so the, the key idea in this one was having a sense for who you're battling based on previous turns and using that information, right? Choosing to stay in there with Umbreon, even though you could have been on court into Protect. It just seemed like the right move to me. It seemed like Cranky was setting me up to think something uh, and that he was going to do something else. So knowing your opponent, I think, can make all the difference in choosing those kind of riskier plays, right? Uh, I set him up earlier once, and then I took advantage of it both times, once with that Flutter main, and once here with the Raichu. So turn 42 is what I think was the turning point of this match. You can let me know whether or not you agree. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for checking out the Gen 9 video. Let me know if you have any interest in seeing more of these or other generations as they continue to battle across many different ladders, although I will always choose randoms because I think it's more fun. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.